So I want to address a, uh, a subject today that just really infuriates me, and this is spinal surgery. Um, here's what commonly gets said of people that don't take care of themselves at all. They usually say, well, if this doesn't work, I guess I'll just go get surgery, right? I'll do PT, I'll do chiropractic. If that doesn't work, I'll just go get surgery. Like surgery is going to work at the end of this thing. It doesn't. Um, let me tell you a little bit about spinal surgery here. First of all, it is, there may be cases, and I don't know which ones they are, when in a serious, serious trauma, it might be necessary to stabilize. Might, I don't know, I haven't seen it. But for chronic damages or wear and tear, it has virtually no success. How do I know that? Well, uh, a few years back, they, the AMA owns a, these codes called uh, their diagnosis codes. And they used to have a diagnosis code called failed back surgery syndrome. That was where ICD-9 codes, it was called failed back surgery syndrome. Just to show you that this happens so often that they actually had to put a code in their diagnosis, like a diagnosis would be back pain. Well, they actually had to have a, a, a diagnosis, failed back surgery syndrome, just to show you how bad this is. But when they came out to ICD-10 codes, which they updated after I don't know how many years, and uh, they called it post-laminectomy syndrome. This is, this is very typical of culture uh, where George Carlin does a wonderful thing on this. If you ever looked up his thing on euphemisms, he talks about how back in uh, World War I, they called the situation where the body just started shutting down from all the, the stress and trauma. They called it shell shock, but today they call it post-traumatic stress disorder, which nobody knows what the hell means, but everybody understands shell shock. Well, it's very similar what they do with language. They use the language to hide. Four, very, very, very obvious. Failed back surgery syndrome. Now it's post-laminectomy syndrome. Very soft. It's like nobody's responsible for this. So just to understand, these things are so bad that they actually had to come up with a diagnosis for it. So not too long ago, I was at, uh, I met a gentleman who was a, uh, an engineer for a spinal surgery company. They sold artificial discs or something like that. And he told me that he just got back from Atlanta to teach somebody how to do this operation. Uh, what he did tell me, I already remember this, the values, he said, for the same piece of hardware that they sold to Hogue Hospital up in Newport Beach for $3,800, he flew down to Atlanta to sell it to a surgeon down there for $50,000. So that was one thing. But I said to him, well, what was the, what's the success rate of these, these products that you guys sell? And he said to me, he's like, honestly, we're setting them up for the next surgery. That was his answer. Now, that being said, he wasn't trying to be deceiving as they were taking lots of money from people and giving them no results. The problem is people go to medical doctors with legitimate concerns. They have back pain and they want answers. Um, and unfortunately, uh, medical doctors immediately go to drugs and they immediately go to surgery. And um, there's nothing in between. Like for instance, if some guy was extremely obese, 300 pounds, comes into the at five foot eight, comes into the office and says he has back pain. If you were a surgeon, wouldn't it be wise to say to the guy, hey man, you need to lose 100 pounds before I even do surgery. Wouldn't that be a good first step? Doesn't weight stress. I mean, even if I put a 50 pound, 50 pound bag on my shoulders, it would eventually start catching up with me over the years. So. There, there are steps, there, you, people are coming to doctors asking for help. They only got chemicals and knives. That's all they have. So yes, they are setting them up for the next surgery. Now, why does it happen? So why do people, uh, why do you have failed back surgery syndrome? Like for instance, Tiger Woods. Tiger Woods, I believe it had three or four micro discectomies. Now, first of all, let me, let me talk about micro discectomies for a minute. There's nothing micro about it. They think it's, le it's, 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 non, it, it's minimally invasive surgery. And what they do is they put a little cut in the spine and, the, and behind here, and they go in and they cut off some of the disc. But there's nothing uh, minimally invasive about this at all. To do that, they have to get by skin. They have to get by fat. They have to get by ligaments. They have to go in through all this area and then cut off some of the disc in here. There's nothing minimally invasive about that to begin with. But the Tiger Woods had four surgeries and finally at the end of it, they said the hell with it and they just fused it. I believe they fused S1 and L5. 
Why would that happen? The reason is, is because the body compensates. You have to understand this, this, this whole, the whole uh, uh, part of the basis of life is adapting and compensating. If you sprain your left knee, you're going to automatically limp on your right knee. There's nothing wrong with your right knee. But if you keep limping on it over and over and over again, year and year after year, you're eventually going to wear out the cartilage in that knee and it's going to be bone on bone. So how did the body, as the cartilage wears out, the body builds more bone. That's called osteoarthritis or degenerative joint disease. So this whole process of compensation is why people like Tiger have to get more spinal surgery. So what happens in spinal surgery, let's just say they do a microdiscectomy, they cut off some of the disc, especially in a guy like Tiger Woods, you're cutting off some of the disc. The disc is there as a cushion. It separates the nerve, uh, the nerves and the spinal cords. It separates, it gives a lot of space there to that. Well, as you cut off the disc, the disc is there for, it's there for a shock absorber, it's there for protection. But the problem is, if you keep twisting and twisting, like Tiger, extremely, extremely powerful, twisting, uh, twisting the spine for his hits and golf, it starts to wear out the disc. So if you do a microdiscectomy, if you start there, you're taking away, let's say you cut out 25% of the disc. Now you have only 75% of what's left of the disc to be able to sustain the same forces that even 100% of the disc couldn't sustain. Or the 100% of the disc could not sustain those forces. Now you have even less. So let's cut off another 25%. Now there's 50% less disc space, or less disc there, less disc material that has to sustain the same amount of force the tiger's hitting every year. So of course, eventually this is gonna wear out. And finally they said, screw it. They just, they just fused it. Most of these things can be absolutely avoided because the problem is subluxation is when the vertebrae is moving back. And the Gonstead system, we're setting that vertebrae forward, getting the pressure off that nerve. That nerve comes out right here. So if that bone is shifted back, that nerve's already gonna be pinched. Cutting off some of the disc doesn't do anything. Worse than that, and I'm gonna show you this in a minute, Putting surgery, fusing a bone in the wrong position, gives the person no chance of recovery. There's no chance to get that person better. If you would fuse the bone when it was in, if a chiropractor adjusted it, then you decided to fuse it there. Well, it's still a terrible idea, but it would certainly would work out a lot better than that vertebrae shifted back and then fusing it. So let me just go through a couple examples of you. Um, by the way, this, this is so bad. This failed back surgery syndrome, or even doing surgery in general, so bad. There was recently a shooting in Missouri of a, of a, a, a guy that got spinal surgery. Excuse me, it was in Oklahoma. He got spinal surgery. He was worse off after the spinal surgery and lost his mind. He probably was taking antidepressant medication that seems to be very common among these people because they're so depressed because of so much pain. And that just numbs the entire senses too. And he went to the hospital and he killed a doctor and four people totally. So this is a very serious issue here. I'm gonna go through right now and show you some just examples of this and how these things played out. I, I wanna just talk very briefly about this case right here. This is, a, this is a guy that had a spondylolisthesis in the office. He came in and uh, he was here from, uh, let's see, uh, about six weeks and six to seven weeks, we took a new x-ray here. And um, I did this, this form and he said his back pain was 50% better. Now for those of you who don't know what a spondylolisthesis is, it's a condition where the vertebrae, uh, the pars actually fracture and the vertebrae moves up this way. So the goal with the spondy is that nerve's still getting pinched in there. What we do with a spondylolisthesis is we'd set the vertebrae underneath it to align those up. This is what happened in this case right here. So by the time uh, you could see very clearly, you have a very, very severe sacrum issue here. This is the back of L5, sacrum's all the way back over here. So he had the spondy and um, we did the, we, we, when I did the reevaluation, he said he was 50% better. He said, um, he said uh, pain was there five times a week. Now it's down to two times, two times a week. Initially, the pain was a seven to eight. Now it's a four, a four to five, from five times a week to two times a week. So 50% uh, 50 change, um, pretty good. 
as he was just finishing off stabilization, uh, and that was that was only six seven weeks. You know, you got to give the body a couple months. You're dealing with discs. Discs they don't heal very quickly. They're not like bones. Bones break. They heal up uh, very quickly with bone tissue. Discs heal up with scar tissue. So um, you got to give the body a couple months. So he was here uh, seven weeks. Right before he was finishing off with his final visit, with, with within like one or two visits of finishing off, I think this would have been about three to four months in, he elected to go have spondylolisthesis surgery. I don't even know what they do for that, but I can tell you this. When you have a posterior, this number, 14 millimeters, they should be right in exact location. That sacrum should be up here. When they fuse that, whether they're going to do it from the front or back, it does not matter. They are still fusing that in the wrong position. The vertebrae, will, the nerve will be pinched in there. That will never be taken care of by surgery. They're just locking this into position. Now, here's what happens when you lock this vertebrae into position. The vertebrae on top of it, since this is not moving, there will always be constant pain. Never get out of it. But when you lock vertebrae on top of it. Now where you had five vertebrae moving to make the motion in the lumbars, now you only have four because these are locked as one. So what happens, the vertebrae on top compensate by moving more than they should. And anytime you have more compensation, you have more wear and tear on a joint. So of course, it's eventually going you know, this is why we go from L5 to L4 to L3. This is why the, the, when you go for surgery, the doctor will tell you that there's a good chance that you're going to have to get it again. Why? Because it doesn't work. Remember? Failed back surgery syndrome. Doesn't work. Okay? So I, I don't know what happened with the rest of this case. I haven't heard anything about it, but um, it's not going to improve. Uh, you cannot lock a bone into that position and think it's going to get better. And the disastrous effect, all these discs look pretty good up here, but over time they're just going to start wearing out because they're moving more than they should. So so this is a this is another case here um, of a guy that came into the office and uh, there's, it looks like there's five months between these, be, between his before and a, his, his, his first visit and his final visit. And midway through, we were in uh, about two months in, we took his, we, he came in, his major complaint was uh, low back pain and sciatica. By the time we were midway through in about two months, his sciatica pain was 60% better and his low back pain was 40% better. But th by the time, about five months later, by the time we were finished off with anything, his sciatica was 80% better and his uh, low back pain was 65% better. Um, so a significant, uh, a significant amount of change um, here in this. Now, as far as the pain here level, he initially said he was four out of 10 uh, in the sciatica, four out of 10, one to two times a week. That adjusted, but by the time we finished, he was uh, two to three out of 10 once every couple weeks with the sciatica. So big changes in this guy's life here. Now his major problem was L5, very clear. Many, many people have this issue with L5. Uh, L5 shift to posterior, that's worth setting right there. Now, when I your low back pain is 65% better, you're, you're getting low back pain by the time it's done, 65% of the time you're good. Uh, um, uh, you said you're 60, excuse me, you said you're 65% better. It only gets up to a three out of 10, one to two times a week. Now, when you look at that, there's a significant amount of damage compared to a normal disc here and that L5, which is severely, severely degenerated right there. Um, significant amount of damage on that. But 80% better sciatica, 65% low back pain. Pretty good. Well, that wasn't enough. So, he decided to push his luck, and he ended up going to Germany. Now, this is 2018, so he went into Germany, flew to Germany for a surgery, and what they did was they put an artificial disc in. Now, unfortunately, I don't have the picture of this, uh, this disc. Um, I did see it, and it's this cute little disc that they put in right there. You know how I got to see it? Because it didn't work. He spent 25 grand to fly over there, get the surgery done, come on back, and the reason he showed me the picture is because he was back in the office. There's lots of promises with spinal surgery, but it doesn't work. When you look at the statistics, there's other things you can do. How about just losing weight? Wouldn't that be the first ideal thing? Um, so anyway, I just show you this, that there was a tremendous amount of improvement, uh, but still wasn't good enough 
rolled the dice, made a real bad mistake. Okay, so here's another case. This is a woman. She was in her uh, uh, 60s here. And she came in, obviously, she said it was just low back pain, of course, was the major reason that she came in. And then neck issues uh, were the issue. But here's the amazing thing. Now, now this, I, I don't have the other dates on it. I'm just looking at the final time I took an x-ray on her. She said significant, uh, uh, significant improvement, range of motion in the neck is better, reduced pain in the lumbar spine. Um, so uh, pretty significant changes in here for her. Now, just because she said she had significantly re improved does not mean she did not have any pain. She still had a lot of pain. As a matter of fact, um, if you look at this, and I'll get to the history on the x-ray, these are the conditions, this is what she came in taking. Uh, Effexor, which is an SSRI, that's an anti-depression medication. MS Cotton, which is an extended release morphine. This is what she was taking daily. Oxycodone, uh, Lamotrigine, which is a seizure medication, then reflux medication, Synthroid, um, Progesterone, Estradol, and then uh, an injection for osteoporosis. Anyway, the case with her, of course, she's in a lot of back pain. She had cauda equina syndrome was her initial complaint. That's why she went to the doctor. So she was losing control of her bowels, losing control of her legs. So she went to the doctor and they decided to fuse L5, uh, excuse me, they fused the sacrum L5 and L4. Again, L5 in the wrong position. Now, initially they did this fusion from the front. So L5, it shifted back. It's pinching that nerve there. That's the one that goes right through the, uh, the bowels, the legs the sex organs, and that was pinching off that nerve there. Now, they initially did the surgery from the front. They fused it in the wrong position. The vertebrae was not in a correct position. It was shifted back. It was pinching that. So they fused that permanently in the wrong position. So, of course, she was in agony, but her body had rebelled against this thing so bad, it broke, it broke the screws. You can see that uh, the bracket there is the brace is broken. So they finally, after they went through the front, that didn't work. They said, screw it, went through the back, and they fused it in the back here. And of course, they permanently fused the L5, of course, in the wrong position. So um, that she had any relief is an absolute miracle. Now, the amazing thing is, is after this disaster, still loved the still loved spinal surgery, still had the utmost respect for everybody helping her instead of saying, hey, this was a bad idea. So still programmed into that so much so that after this, even though we had significant improvement there, she wanted to go in for surgery on the neck. Now, this brings a good point. The body is the best surgeon. If you're going to refuse to do chiropractic, refuse to take care of yourself, you should just, you should just let your body fuse it up. Because what happens is when you have a subluxation, and the nerves are being pinched off, the vertebrae doesn't move, the vertebrae compensate by that, Eventually, it wears out naturally. You don't need a doctor to fuse you. If you think a doctor can do a better job of your own body fusing you, which your body's been doing for long before doctors would do this, you put all your faith in, 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 in a human instead of the innate wisdom in your body that knows how to fuse this yourself. Now, this is still a bad idea. I mean, you're going to kill off that nerve. Fortunately, your body has other nerves that can... Uh, take over at that point. It has lots of fail safes on it, but you're going to restrict motion there. And the same thing is going to happen. When this fuses up, the vertebrae on top of it have to move more than they should. Well, that's pretty much happening here. There's not much stabilizing you could do in the spine. You could keep this woman out of help her with a little bit of discomfort and pain, but her body is well on the way to fusing that up. The point is, is um, if you take care of yourself, Give your body a chance to work. Go see a chiropractor for goodness sakes. Stop doing the issue things that you're doing that are causing this. Your body has a way better chance. Now, as soon as you go to route of surgery, um, this was af this is the list of drugs. That list of drugs that I gave you was listed after the surgery. If the surgery would work, you wouldn't be taking those drugs anyway. So again, I have to assume, well, it's just not working. Now. It looks like everything I'm saying 
that it's just hating on hating on organized med medicine today, hating on spinal surgeons, things like that. It's not about that. Um, the big problem with medicine is they they take chronically poor lifestyle decisions and try to surgically fix those or take drugs to fix it. Like if you're overweight, maybe it'd be a good idea to suggest to your patient you should start eating a better diet. Then maybe you wouldn't need to take chemicals to lower your blood pressure, your cholesterol, and you wouldn't have extra weight that would destroy your spine. Well, then why are surgeons good? Because they can save your life. Let's face it, as soon as medicine got involved in long-term chronic condition maintenance, because there's no cure, only the body can cure, as soon as they got involved in that, um, deaths have rose dramatically from drug interactions, from surgery interactions, everything, everything going really bad. So what is medicine really good for? Trauma. The United States medical system is the best in the world. We have the best trained doctors compared to anywhere uh, when it comes to trauma. Trauma. Unfortunately, where do we learn about trauma? War. That's where we've gotten the most of our information. I mean, it used to be pretty bad. We would get out a saw, you know, and hack somebody's arm off in, in the Revolutionary War and tape it up. Well, there's much better equipment that we can do that now. They're, they're, they're much better at surgically stabilizing traumatic patients. I saw an x-ray one time, um, maybe I can find it, but a girl who got in a car accident said she couldn't feel her legs. When the x-ray, I think it was a CAT scan that they put up, her spine, the top part of her spine was here and the bottom part was here. They were completely unseparated. That injury that might it was horrifying. I was horrifying that this girl, it was incredible she survived. Medicine is great for car accidents, traumas. They can do a great job with their stabilizing surgery. But once it gets into the realm of chronic lifestyle, bad decision making with your lifestyle, it's a disaster. And that's why people come into this office. So this one, um, uh, 2019, this person came in. Um, he said it had been happening for two years. Uh, his complaint was neuropathy, neck pain, shoulder pain. Um, spinal surgery in 2016, uh, he said uh, L, L2 to L4 in, in uh, 2016 and L4 to S1 in 2000, and, excuse me, L2, in, in 2007, they fused L4 to S1 and then in 2016, L2 to L4. Um, you know what this is? This is a pain pump. What he says makes him feel better is endorphins. So that's what was releasing in here. He had this pain pump installed inside his body that he would hit a button to get rid of some of the pain. Uh, again, once again, look, relative alignment. This guy had a posterior sacrum right here and that was shifted back and that's what was pinching off the nerve. Um, he had this condition right here, sacrum shifting. I, I'm inverting this just so you can see most of the time in L5 shifting back. This one, sacrum is shifting back, pinching off the nerve there. That's what exactly was happening there. And instead of getting that fixed, and most people don't know to go to a chiropractor to get that checked, but he went for a surgical option, so they fused it. Um, they did a posterior surgery. They fused it in the wrong position. Um, how are you ever going to be able to set that back? Uh, this area, unfortunately on him, you can set an SI joint. Uh, you can make him feel a little bit better. Um, you can certainly help out with the neck, but it, you're never going to fix this. I don't even know if getting the, the, the nails pulled out or the screws pulled out and I'm getting adjusted after that. I, I don't know. There's just a, a terribly, a terribly sad case. Of course, uh, still, still he takes Lyrica too. So besides the pain pump that he has, uh, and that he said it was releasing endorphins. Um, uh, there's just, there's no hope once you get to this point. So why did I make this video? Um, you can see I'm really upset about it. Um, and it's because I hate to see people hacked up like this. Um, I'm very thankful for what medicine does in a very limited scope. But unfortunately, I get to deal with this stuff. And... Uh, 
Um, we don't like to tell people that uh, you ain't ever going to get better. Um, I really, there are so many alternatives to taking care of your lifestyle first. Before doing any type of surgery, you should always, always examine your lifestyle. Am I sleeping right? Am I keeping my stress management low? Am I uh, um, praying properly? Am I eliminating toxins in my body? I'm looking at my poster. Are you doing your exercises? Are you, are you staying hydrated? Are you eating good foods? Are you taking care of yourself? You should always make sure you get, obviously, getting adjusted. That's what we do. We, we correct nerve interference in the body here at the office. Are you doing those things first? If you're doing those things, um, and nothing works out for you, you're at your proper weight, you're at your proper health, whatever, um, you can make the decision then. But so many people see surgery as, well, if it doesn't work, if that doesn't work, I'll just get surgery. Do you know if I stopped with my first chiropractor, I would have had surgery at my age, at the age of, uh, I was 28 when I got checked out by Emory Spine Clinic. They said three to five years. So that would have been, um, what, up to 33, somewhere between uh, 30 and 33, I would have had spine surgery. That's if I stopped at my first chiropractor. There's many different techniques. You gotta find a technique that works for you. You don't stop, you go to a bad dentist, you don't stop going to your dentist. You find another dentist that you like. And the same thing with chiropractic. You go to somebody that doesn't help, well, find a different technique. There's lots of techniques that can help you. Instead of giving up and just going to this, now this person never did that, he never started off at chiropractic, but instead of going and getting something like this done, wouldn't it be worth it to spend a little bit extra months finding the right person? I mean, I had to go through five chiropractors before I met Dr. Stewart. My life completely changed so much that I became a chiropractor. So um, this wasn't meant to be a definitive video on surgery, but I kind of feel like it is. I explained uh, the consequences of surgery. I explained how your body compensates. I showed you some bad cases. I showed you some cases that were good, that actually had changes in but patients still elected to do surgery on top of that. Um, instead of accepting it, hey, matter is limited. There's, you know, you cut your hand off, you can't grow another hand. When you lose the disc, you can't grow another disc, but at least you can function somewhat on it. Uh, you just may have to change your lifestyle a little bit. So I hope this gets you to, to think about these things. I hope this brings this topic up a little bit more um, that you guys can uh, at least start doing your own research on these things. There's so much information available to you right now that um, the only reason you would make a decision uh, of just going straight into surgery is just out of pure laziness. Is that you don't want to do any research and you believe your doctor is really, really right. So anyway, I, I love all you guys. I appreciate you guys. I really hope that you you make some. You really uh, take care of yourself and, and and really understand that the only person that cares about your body is you. Nobody else. Okay. Love you guys.